What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Burning the Red Shirt. Andrew P. Katz, myself, Chris K. here to talk college fantasy football. Maybe the most random things ever at the very end. We'll see. Uh, Andrew came to me last week with a topic. We couldn't get it done because of uh, timing. But uh, Andrew, what did we want to discuss today for maybe one of the first times ever? We have created a show sheet. So I'm curious if you want to articulate what we're actually going to talk about today. Yeah, we probably should have done a little more in terms of setting parameters because I mean, you can make arguments for lots of guys potentially fitting in to this uh, this topic. Uh, but basic idea being like the um, the topic of like if you're a school that is going into the month of July, not too far from now, like what the f were you thinking going through the off season where you netted out with the player or players, the player that we'll be talking about for your school today as this guy being your starting quarterback, like multiple transfer porter went, or I guess transfer transfer portal window window, um, right. was open closed and now, or at least it seems to be, even though it seems like guys are still entering the portal. So who knows what's going on there. Um, but it's not like you're limited in terms of your ability to look at your roster at the, beginning of January, the end of December or whatever, right? Um, and it's not like that's what you're working with. You can go to the FCS ranks. You can go reach out to guys at other schools, see what happens in terms of guys entering the portal. You're you're an FPS institution, one of 134, right? Obviously, got, uh, so they're not all created equal in terms of their ability to kind of pull guys and utilize their magnetic force to pull uh quarterbacks to them but you would think that they uh they should be able to net out a little better than some of them have when it comes to what they're looking at with with respect to the quarterback position i kind of extend this into maybe even the running back position but a little bit different so let's we'll start with quarterbacks because we might not even get to running backs we'll see uh i don't think we need to talk about the first guy on the list because it's happened we've already talked about it like 15 times Peyton Thorne, Auburn is like a really good example, I feel like. It's like you're Auburn specifically, right? Like you're an SEC team with like a – that has some level of tradition. Like how could you not – how could you go into the offseason with Peyton Thorne as, as your quarterback and leave it as Peyton Thorne as quarterback? But uh, I thought an interesting name here with a little bit of news around the school this past week. Uh, is this the guy that you thought it would be? Is uh, Parker Navarro is like the, the best example of this? when we introduced the idea to each other yeah yeah he he was the guy that when 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 i was looking at, um at some stuff preparation for upcoming drafts and just generally overall it's like i don't understand how you come to the conclusion that this is the guy you want running your offense um like ohio has been trending it feels like towards more like modern offense, more modern approach, generally speaking, uh, year over year. And now it looks like they want to just go back to the dark ages. Like this dude can't, he can't, I don't think he could throw a football. Um, he, what, what were, do you want to pull up his stats from the bowl game? They're misleading to some degree. I think even if like he, I think he threw for about like a buck 65 against George Southern with at least half of that production production come up off of like busted and trick plays. Um, Yeah. He had uh, 11 for 16, 120 yards, one touchdown, 15 carries, (laughs) 71 yards. He had a, he had a big day against long Island university in week. I guess that was, was that when like uh, Harris and. Yeah. That was was week week one. Right. Cause week zero Rourke. Get goes down again against San Diego State. We all know he's not going to play right against Long Island, but the real shocker was that like CJ Harris was also um, hurt. I think I think that's how it went down, or maybe he, he maybe played he and got hurt mid game. I believe. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. You, like it's not like that. It's not like Harris and Rourke transferred out or did like kept their cards close to the chest and then just dipped into the portal right before it closed or something like you had multiple months leading up 
to this. Like that, this offense, if they, like, I get, they have to be going with Navarro at this point, right? Isn't this just going to look like the Kyle Kelly Ball State offense? It's going to be bad. I'm like, I'm looking at Winning Edge's return, returning production database. And uh, they obviously, Navarro, but then they brought in a Juco kid that's like 6'5, 220. But I don't know. I feel like if you're going to have this offense, you need a runner because like you have nobody to throw to. Uh, every, I mean, we're talking six guys, uh, three receivers, two tight ends, all transferred out. And the Wigless graduated. They brought in two, I think it's FCS or Juco receivers in the, out of the portal to replace them. It is not pretty. And then, of course, they lose Sia Bengera, uh, O'Shawn Allison. So now they are rocking uh, Ricky Hunt and Anthony Tyus uh, at running back. This is like, this has to be like a run first offense. So basically what you're saying, right? Like Kyle Kelly, just run it. Everybody else on the other, on the uh, team has zero value because of it. Yeah. I guess maybe it's commendable if you're from the perspective of like, all right, we, this is what we're working with from a roster construction perspective this year. Let's just go all in and, and basically it, it, you know, maybe it, it's just maybe it's just the Kyron Drones and Bishal Tutin of the Mac, right? It's just gonna be <laughs> that 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 one two uh, the one two punch QB running back uh, going for like forty touch at forty uh, rushes a game. Although... Don't do that to me. <laughs> Don't do that. There, at yeah. least there's receivers that are respectable at right. Virginia Tech. Some level of threat of the of the passing game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, that was me being mean to to Kyron. Um, of course, but. Yeah, I, I I just I don't see how you don't go into the portal and try and bring um, a quarterback that can can throw the ball a little more. I mean, what do you have to to entice a quarterback to come to Ohio? Right, like it's not like you have it's Mac, so it's the lowest level of G five. And you think so? uh, yeah, Mac has got to be the lowest level. Like it's comparable Probably. to like the random. No offense, people from New Mexico, like the New Mexico's, New Mexico states of the world. I think you got to put the Mac above CUSA. I don't know. Not anymore. I think you're still hanging on to like four years ago when Maction was like actually cool. Now it's like Maction's cool because it's just football on a Tuesday. It used to be so much cooler than it than it's been recently, which okay. leads me to another team I think has kind of the same thing. Do you think like, Bert Emanuel is actually going to start for Central Michigan. And if it's not him, like, who would it be? I, I think it'll be the Iowa kid, Joey, uh, or whatever his name is. But how do you, if you're using Joey Labus, you, what is your offense? No rushing threat from a quarterback and 0.1% of a passing threat? Like, it's not like he's a better passer. He's a better passer, but he's the tallest midget. Yeah, I don't know anything about his passing capability. I just kind of assumed it was like that he could throw football, and they'll they. I think that they'll go with him, but like I haven't really read up too much on the ongoings of Central Michigan uh, spring practice. You, uh, you've seen Labus play, and I'm going to tell you what bowl game it was, and you're going to be like immediately think. Oh no! It was, was it the, that? It was the Kentucky one. The Kentucky Music City Bowl, fourteen for twenty-four, one hundred thirty-nine yards and a touchdown. Yeah. So he, basically, he's trash. <laughs> the only way he plays is like Bert Emanuel can't throw like a two-yard route, right? You think they they, they start Bert? I think in slash hope they start Bert. I think CFF players everywhere should pray for Bert. For sure. I I don't know. If you made me pick who I think is going out and taking the first snap week one, I would put it at 65-35 uh, Lebes or Lebas, whatever his name is. I will say, unlike Ohio, they do return a lot of receivers. So maybe they're trying to go with a more conventional offense because they think that like some of these returning receivers are decent enough. But I don't know. I saw that Iowa Kentucky game and I 
<laughs> I think we all want, we should all want no part of that one. You added, a, you added a couple of names. <laughs> We're just living in the Mac. One of them was a Mac guy. Who's the Mac guy you're thinking of? Ethan Hampton. So I haven't, I haven't watched him much. I feel like we've all kind of been exposed to him in some way, shape, or form through uh, Northern Illinois scratching their star position players uh, five minutes after the game starts on Action Tuesday or Wednesday. So we've all seen enough enough slash a decent amount of uh, the Northern Illinois backup running backs, backup receivers, backup quarterbacks. Um, the I don't. Ethan Hampton doesn't feel like he's going to really move the needle whatsoever. Maybe look, we're just like we could. Pro- I guess we could probably play this game with maybe half of the max schools, and maybe this is a testament to what you were saying about their their standing within the FBS landscape. Um, but I like. I don't know how. I guess just from the perspective of being in the program a few years that is incentive to roll with him as your QB one. If you're uh Thomas hammock, but it, I don't know. I don't, I don't really see what's exciting about him or what you can, what you can look at and be like, yeah, that's like, okay, we're, we're good. We don't need to go look. We don't need to be actively looking to bring someone in to be our starting quarterback. I feel like some of these schools that don't have a lot to like really, incentivize players to come to their school probably focus a little bit more on like the game manager at quarterback like ethan hampton to me screams been in the program knows the playbook not gonna screw anything up we have two good running backs we have rudolph is back like so to me it's like all right well let's put like you know throwing you're gonna throw the ball 120 times to rudolph anyways like it's not gonna be like that extensive of a route tree that you can't <laughs> perform right like you know i don't want to throw shade at uh eric froton's lookalike and rocky rocky lombardi but rocky lombardi wasn't special but like you put up decent enough numbers like you're telling me ethan hampton doesn't turn it over 100 times and he's decent enough like that they can't win a few games i mean that's got to be the route they're thinking right yeah yeah for sure if you're Northern Illinois, what is your what are your selling points, Andrew? <laughs> well, last year in Jared's Mac only league, I took my first three picks were Northern Illinois guys. I, I think I started with Ontario and then um, Rocky and then Rudolph. Um, so my the selling point is like we are Northern Illinois. We have star power at the skill positions. If you're playing in a Mac only we league, can, we can we can win, first, we can win a bowl game. Zone. We can win a bowl game. Come here. So Hampton did play extensively in one game last year. 13 for 23 for 97 yards. Touchdown, two interceptions against Tulsa. Probably hitting, hitting Rudolph for his negative two yard A dots and just seeing what's yeah. Good. 4.5 yards per attempt for him in 2023. So that's not great. Not great at all. <laughs> you put another name on this list. I have no idea who this person is. I thought you actually meant to type in Freddie Brock, but apparently Forrest Brock is a player in college football. Did we talk Temple uh, last week or two weeks ago? Have we we talked Temple about a thousand times last year, <laughs> and we have not talked about him once since. Really? Uh, most of my win total bets – so far, are like I feel like such um such a drooler because I'm I'm like laying juice on every one of them. Um, Temple is one of the few where I bet uh, a team at plus money from a win total perspective. Unfortunately, like so when the G five win totals went live initially on Fanduel, I missed the boat, uh and. It, and didn't notice that they went up for like half a day or a day or whatever. And like to, to that, I immediately scrolled to, cause I've been wanting to hit them all for, I've been wanting to hit them for a good amount of time was temple and San Jose state, San Jose state. Initially I was like, I wanted to be high on them, but like the vibes are so bad. I'm like, I need to bet the under on this team. 
hit go to their win total and it was initially it opened at like five and a half but it's juiced to like minus 250 so obviously other people were thinking the same thing and then tapple it was at three and a half juiced to like minus 250 as well i'm like shit i guess i'm not the only smart person in the room so but then or you're just it, one of the sheep exactly yeah um th- eventually though it moves to two and a half and but it was like that it was two and a half under at plus 110. I thought about for a, like a little while and it wasn't moving. And then like kind of just looked at their schedule a little more. I was like, and then I, I watched the, uh, I found student uh, run television coverage of their spring game. I don't want to like, sh- like, I don't want to say like mean things about like college kids that are like creating student media, but like it's, it's a hilarious watch. Um, so, and like that kind of just confirmed even more for me. Like this, this team, like dude, I, th- I, the schedule is not even that hard. But like zero and twelve is feels super realistic. Uh, like um, they do play UConn. Their non-con is wild. Um, they host both Utah State and Coastal. They open it against Oklahoma, and then I think UConn see other. Uh, the other non-con game they have, and then they play an AC, AAC schedule. Like, I don't. It's 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 going to be. They've 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 got to be the worst team in the FBS. I think though, like they they're playing a quarterback, right? So they lose EJ Warner. They bring in some kid from the FCS ranks, who they bring him in for the spring. I guess he spends part of the spring there, and then he's like, "Peace, I'm out. Like this is so bad. I'm going back to my FCS school." Um, so then they're stuck with Evan Simon that they brought in from Rutgers. He's got stats that actually aren't that terrible. Um, like I, I, I follow Rutgers fairly closely, um, living in Jersey and he's got like a 300 yard game from like 2022. He didn't play in the spring game. I don't think, uh, just based on the student coverage that I was watching, like it it made it seem like Forrest Brock and then. I forget the other kid's name. Uh, they were taking uh, most of the reps in the spring game. Brock is the kid that, so against SMU last year when they lose by like 50 points or whatever, uh, after playing your boy Quincy Patterson for the first half, right? They bring in Brock in the second half and he can actually like move the football a little bit. Um, I think he's he's a Juco kid. Like yep. it feels like he's got a leg up, but like that's not a good thing. Um Everything you read and everything that the what like it seemed like came out of the spring and spring game is like there's a lot of work to do on offense. The way they scored their spring game, you look at their their spring game score, it was like 59 41, but like they were giving out points for, for points for like first downs. <laughs> I was just gonna say, there's nothing better, no better way to like pump up your score than to be like, yeah, completed a 10 yard pass. You get yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's like three points for an explosive or whatever. Um, it sounded like the defense just dominated uh, the, the spring game. Like, I, I don't know how, uh, but oh, but yeah, I, like it. It feels like they kind of got screwed in multiple ways um, in terms of how they netted out with the, this dude, Forrest Brock, um, probably likely being QB one like the kid they brought in from the FCS, like just dipped on them. Obviously Warner leaving isn't helpful. Um, so at least unlike some of the schools we just talked about, they at least they had, it seemed like they had a plan. Um, but the reality being that their temple, like that dude, that the dude, Stan Drayton, that's their coach, right? Like, I guess he got the coaching job by like, by not screwing up whatever his role was at Texas as like co-OC, like, He's got. He's gone after this year. It's over. It's just a matter of if it's like in season or after the season. Um, but just, I just watching the interviews he's giving to these kids and like the, on during the student uh, broadcast, like he, it's on his face. He knows. Um, <laughs> um, but it, I'm a little worried from a betting perspective that like maybe Brock can actually move the football enough to get them some points but there's there's not a lot of encouraging things going on with that offense though right like no no they do have dante right back 
<laughs> Seventh year guy, Dante Wright's back. Zay Baines is back. So that's interesting. Running back, I don't know if any of those guys are good, but they have guys that like have FBS experience, like at least the, at least like two or three of them. Yeah, they have a bunch of just a bunch of guys. Has anybody <laughs> drafted Reese Clark, this Temple tight end? Dude, I, I was just about to bring that up. Like they um well, he's well, like, I, I mean, he was one of three last year. We loved two of them, right? Yeah. And he played, you know, like if you were talking like zeros, he was definitely not a zero last season. He had like a bunch of games with at least one catch, which we're we're de- we're put you know, we're pulling at straws here. Like, but you know, this is an offense that last year focused some talent uh some time on the uh tight end position. So maybe. I am almost positive it was him that put up a huge spring game. Um, I should have taken notes about it, but I'm I pretty think sure he's he- the only touchdown for uh, for Forrest Brock too. Okay, from last year, but uh, I will say Forrest Brock looks like a Forrest Brock 100. And the other piece of uh, interesting info I have here is: Do you know? Do you remember what game? Evan Simon threw for 300 yards. Is it Iowa? It was Iowa. Could you imagine? You did one fairly incredible game, and it's against Iowa. Like, what were you doing against Indiana? Like, what were what were you doing <laughs> that week? So, thought that was a little interesting. All right, so shifting gears a little bit for some running backs because we're there already. This is a little bit different. So, same thing, like. Same idea of like, this is who we presume to be the starter, but they're in like interesting offenses that could in theory be valuable. And it's like, are we targeting the right one? Does that make sense so far, Andrew? You following? You picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. The first name I have here is Kavorian Barnes, a guy that was like top two, three rounder last year. He's definitely being drafted later, but like, are we all correct in the assumption that he's the guy? Because it feels like, he could very easily not be. It could just feel like he could be a, a zero by week three. The highest likelihood in terms of outcomes with that RB room is just annoying, right? Um, where it's a different guy of like the three or four who either gets in for a couple scores or goes for 100 yards every week. Um, he goes pretty late in drafts for obvious reasons um whenever he gets drafted i'm like damn i kind of wish like that there's worse ideas with like an rb uh nine or ten or whatever um i don't think the i don't think robert henry is going anywhere uh he was the number one juco running back last year and scored 10 touchdowns like dude clearly has talent they like him at the goal line I, um, the case for Kavorian Barnes, right, is that like he had what was it? A, he had like a hernia last year. He always felt banged up. Yeah, it always yeah. felt like there was something going on with him that prevented him from. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him look absolutely incredible down the stretch in 2022. So I, I think there's a fair case to like if you're just looking to take a shot. Um, to more directly answer your question, like, are we drafting the wrong guy as RB1? If I'm picking one guy from the UTSA running back room, it's probably still him. I would say I definitely am. I think I have him in, like, three of six champ series. Like, I have definitely drafted Barnes. Uh, But the more I look at Henry, the more I'm intrigued. You know, every running back in that room is thick. Like, I saw the beat reporter (laughs) for them posted, like, a – Every one of them is like 5'10", 5'11", like between 215 and 225, like thick dudes. What's interesting about Henry is that for some reason they did love him at the goal line. He had nine games with a touchdown. He wasn't that far below in terms of attempts or like yards per carry last year. And he also had games with two and three receptions. So he had two or three receptions in six games. So like there is some upside there if we do find out that it is him, but I think you're probably right. The most likely outcome is that we get both of them and maybe a dabble of the third guy. Uh, And, you know, Barnes is maybe more productive on the ground, but Henry gets more touchdowns. Do you think they'll run more? What do you think the offense will look like compared to like Frank Harris shell of a human that still ran the ball a good bit when he was healthy? Do you think they still run that much with the quarterback or do you think we see a shift to more passing attempts or more rushing attempts by running backs? Who do you think the quarterback is? 
That's a great question. I would say McCown. So the um, the corporate shells are trying to push that dude from Alabama State, right? Um, Dem- Demetrius Davis or whatever his name is. Oh, Demetrius I, Davis, the former. There's an, there's an A in there. Don't just say Demetrius, right? There's, I believe there's an A after the M. <laughs> so I'm, I'm unsure of the exact pronunciation, but I'm assuming it is not Demetrius. It is. There's no, uh, there is an A. Google wanted me to throw an E in there, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Demetrius Davis. You know, I know him because he went, he was between, I think it was Auburn, Texas and Virginia Tech when he went out of high school. He was like a, I think maybe like a soft verbal to Virginia Tech and then ended up going to Auburn. And then obviously, you know what happened? He did nothing, went to Alabama State. I think he did basically nothing. And now he's at UTSA. Yeah. Sound like he got hurt uh, once or twice while at Alabama State. Like, I don't know. It, it feels impossible to parse if he's, if there should be hype from him hype for him both in terms of upside and in the present sense relative to his ability to win the job that I, if you cap it right, the safest bet has to be McCown rip to Eddie Lee. I feel like it's not going to be him. Um, it's definitely not Eddie Lee. We can, yeah, we can I didn't, I didn't actually watch the bowl game against Marshall. I was, I lit a, a bunch of money on fire on it. Um, but I don't know. Does McCown strike you as like a, a running quarterback? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. I kind of quickly looked to see if he did any 15 for 51 yards. I think yeah. he's sneaky fast. Yeah. I don't know. The, the, I, I'm assuming the entire complexity or not complexity, the, the makeup of the offenses would shift if the Demetrius was QB one versus McCown. Like it seems like he does a lot with his speed. That, that's like, um, and they keep signing running backs, uh, right? Like, didn't they get another JUCO kid and get a like um, a pretty talented high school recruit too? Yeah, yeah. The uh, I saw one sentiment that like the the idea is that like they're just gonna run the shit out of the ball this year uh, and can kind of get away from and pivot away from uh, what they've done in recent years in terms of just being like a high flying aerial attack with Frank Harris hitting the same uh, receivers over and over. Um, I I have some Devin McEwen that I paid too much for. Um, I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of not loving that uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's that there's it's tough to I think it's tough to feel really really strong about anything concerning that offense right now. Yeah, I think we I think US, UTSA might be one of the bigger name schools that we just like are just assuming we know everything that we probably know nothing. You know, like yeah, because I think you're right, Demetrius Davis. If he's the quarterback, then well, for one, we don't we should not want any receivers because that's a that feels like a especially this late in the game going there. This has to be a very simple run heavy offense and we already are just presuming it's McCune, but like Willie McCoy's there. They brought in JJ Sparkman and DJ Allen, like P five guys. So there's a, it's a, it's money. And and there's that David Amador guy that everybody loves. Right. 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 I don't know. I think that's an offense. We might be completely wrong on. Um, I had this like revelation maybe six weeks ago and I have not done anything with it because I just don't, know how to pull the trigger and when to pull the trigger on it. But like, part of me is like Micah Bernard came back to Utah to become like the guy. And I don't have any Micah Bernard. So maybe I'm hoping I'm wrong here, but how hard would it be? Or what's the likelihood of Micah Bernard being the guy? Cause he's kind of being drafted. Like he's the guy, the guy light maybe. I mean, as is tradition every year, Right, he will. He'll get props posted uh, for his rushing yards, and we'll have to uncomfortably bet lots of money against him. And, and after he's efficient on like ten carries and in like week one or two or whatever, and potentially comes kind of close to getting there, and we all celebrate when he doesn't. Um, Dude, literally, he did that in the Rose Bowl, and where then, he only got like nine carries, but he he hit the under 
which I had bragged about to my buddies is like the lock of the century. And he hit under by like a yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that dude, and then week one, the following year against Florida, same thing. Um, yeah. I'm, I feel like it likely plays out the same way this year. Like, are you intrigued by Jalen Glover at all? Or do we think he's just a guy? I think he's just a guy. I mean, yeah. he didn't look, I mean, he had opportunities and he right. just didn't, I, I, you know, I, Sion Vaki got drafted by my Lions as a running back and slash, I think, special team or two. Um, I don't know. I don't like a running back that they, the team and the staff decided to go pull a safety to play running back over me. Like, I know that he ended up being drafted in the NFL. So obviously there's talent, but like, that's not a great sign. That can't be a good sign for Jalen Glover. For sure. The, the what makes it this most interesting, I think, is just how much more successful and dynamic the offense likely is with rising back. Uh, right. Like judging Glover based on production the past year when things were like just so hard um, for the offense, it felt like uh, week to week like, um, versus when when's rising like they are a very legitimate offense. Like he opens up so much in the running and the passing game. So even if Glover is in transformational, if they want, if the way it played out was Glover was getting most of the carries Bernard doing Bernard third downy type, uh, type of stuff. Like maybe that's his path to being interesting, but I don't know. I have no interest in Michael Bernard from a fancy perspective. Personally, I just, I don't like, I think he's not very good. Uh, Especially as a runner, don't don't throw it. Don't throw his running props on the up there sports books, and I won't have to bet them. <laughs> I don't know. I am torn because you're right. Like Cam Rising is very very quality for college, yeah. and I think it, there was definitely a difference in the offense. Obviously, we saw like this weird shift of like Nate Johnson getting a lot of snaps and carries and stuff. Uh, they did bring in a tiny little scat back type that was super productive, I think, in the FCS level, Anthony Woods. I don't know. This probably does feel like a just an RBBC. Yeah. And uh, none of them really have any value, but at least Bernard can catch balls. But I don't know. What do you think Jaquindon Jackson? I'm, this surprised me looking at it. What do you think he ran for last year? 747 yards. That was oddly close. 797 yards, but five yards per carry. So, like, in my head, I'm like, why was he decently more productive than Jalen Glover? And I don't think that Jaquinta Jackson is, like, talented, right? He's just, like, a big, tall dude. I don't know. I'm trying to yeah. sell myself on Glover not being worth anything, but maybe I can get there. <laughs> what is your take on the Texas A&M running back room? I know uh, Chasing that he discussed it a few weeks back with Ethan Sauer. He's a big Ruben Owens guy. I have drafted some Ruben Owens before yeah. and after that. Yeah. But I don't know. There's like literally five guys in that room. And it's right. just kind of like it does feel like we're assuming Owens, the former five-star big name, like maybe second best running back in two years ago's class is like just going to be the guy. Who's there? It's Amari Daniels, Le'Veon Moss. Are they both still there? Yep. They have EJ Smith transferred in as well. David Bailey has no more eligibility. David Bailey is out of eligibility. Thank God. Okay. I have drafted Owens once or twice just from the perspective of like, if one guy goes off in that offense, it's probably him. Uh, so in like the 20th plus round or whatever. That's fine. Um, so, but the, the idea, right. When we look like, when we talk about these guys is trying to identify if we're drafting the wrong guy first, right. Uh, do you have a case for why any of the other guys in this running back room would be RB one? Not really. You know, Lavia Moss was like a guy that was considered interesting out of high school. And then he just kind of got supplanted by these others. I think the most likely answer here is that we shouldn't really be drafting any of them. Do you think when it comes to 
looking at this year, and let's remove EJ Smith because he had he was at Stanford, he was injured and whatever. Do you take into account or do you put a lot of stock in what these three, Daniels, Moss, Owens, how they performed last year? Um, I like, like, I, I definitely give a little bit to like Owens. Okay. He, he got run as a true freshman and generally was good and efficient when he did. So like, let's kind of just keep the ball going, move things forward and as, ascend a little bit. That's the, I, that's the argument. That is how I perceived it until I looked at the actual facts. So really? If you look at the three of them, he had the second most carries. They had 10. They basically was 105, 101, 96 carries. Okay. He had 101 carries second. He had 385 rushing yards, which was the worst of the three. Easily the worst of the three. He ran for 3.8 yards per carry compared to 5 and 5.1. Now, uh-huh. if you want to dig even deeper to this, right? It's kind of got <laughs> some levels of like Abu Sama or like Frank Gore from 2022. He had 385 yards. The two games that he actually did anything like over a decent yards per carry were against UL Monroe when they won by six or seven touchdowns and uh, Albaline Christian when they won by four touchdowns, he went 18 for 106. So basically you take those two games out. He has like, I mean, his yards per carry is even worse. You know, it's like three yards per carry. Now, does that give you pause that I've brought that up? Yeah, looks like uh, I got got I got caught just making shit up. I I I drafted <laughs> Owens too, so it's like I, I get it. Ethan, I want your response in Slack or, or of some kind on Twitter about your Owens. He loves Owens. He's I think he thinks a little bit more about the fact that like he'll be a sophomore in the SEC, which obviously does have some value, right? You can't go immediately and not nobody really does that, right? But I don't know. I probably so you, will be done drafting Owens. You li- you list let's say, let's let's move away from that. Um, you listed Michigan guys in both these lists, but then conveniently glossed over both of them. I didn't think Orgy fit the mold of what we were discussing. We can talk Donovan Edwards if you like. Cover cover boy of EA twenty twenty five. NCAA twenty twenty five. And uh Lended his name, image, and likeness to a fine tweet by yourself. Yes, the reason for me going viral last weekend for about <laughs> 20 minutes, which was nice. I got some great responses by people. Thank you for your support and love. Um, I added Donovan Edwards because this does feel like a if you like you want this, you definitely want this position, this RB1 for Michigan. And we're just all assuming this is, but if you look at like the actual games and stuff. It is odd how much he is like so boomer bust and he has absolutely no vision. I don't, I think Mullins is interesting and has a shot and is a good option at the very end to scatter across your teams. But I still think it's just going to ultimately be Edwards or the offense is just trash. Like if Edwards isn't good, then the whole offense is probably trash. I'll take a shot think? at like a late Mullings just because there's some upside, but I don't know. It doesn't doesn't feel like a good thing is going to be happening if Edwards isn't all that great. What do you think their week one usage is? So this is interesting because it's like, how is Michigan going to use this? You know, JJ was was athletic and could run, but they didn't run him because they didn't need to, and also because they wanted to just keep him safe and bubble wrap to ensure that he would be able to play in the playoffs. I don't think they're going to do that with orgy. Like what has orgy done to warrant? Like keeping him safe. I mean, they, they have to get creative and use everybody in all fashions to make, to make it to nine, 10 wins or more potentially. Right. But like, there's no coasting into anything here. So my thought is I think orgy gets 10, 12, 14 carries a game. Edwards, probably around 15 to 18 touches maybe 18 to 20 touches if you include receptions and then uh mullings would be around 10 it just you know that might be valuable last year when they're scoring 45 a game or whatever 40 a game but this year they're probably going to be around 30 i asked this question poorly uh but now that you've so you think orgy's definitely the starter 
I think he's the starter. Yeah. Okay. My my question. So, week one, who do you, who do y'all play week one? You get Texas week two, right? Fresno State's week one. Potential For- L. I, well, you know, the, the line, the face that you just gave, the line is like minus 21 and a half. And I'm like, that's steep for like yeah. a veteran quarterback, like veteran skill guys, a, a real Mountain West team. I don't like right. that line. That's it's a little steep. But yeah, I think considering it's at Michigan and the defense is that good that it'll be fine. So let's but, just say first three drives. What does Edwards is Edwards on is he the running back for all three? Do they go Edwards Mullings for a drive, Edwards for a drive, or do they within within a drive do they play Edwards and then he gets tired, they bring Mullings in, then maybe they bring Edwards back in, or is it based on first down, second down, third down? Um, you know, is it or like I, I, I just think that what's it gonna stop like? So let's say that the offense is not very efficient to start. I would think that Edwards gets the first two series. Mullings gets the third, right? Assuming it's like three to four play drives, five play drives. Okay. If we see like a productive, efficient offense, that's going to play well. I think it's very likely that Mullings just gets dabbled in like, you know, four or five plays for Edwards. Mullings comes in for one or two, maybe strategically around like a third and one or something like that and then bring Edwards back in. That's kind of how I perceive. I mean, that's what they did last year. Like, yeah. like Mullings actually was the second running back that played in the national championship game. So, like, I don't see why they wouldn't do that to start against Fresno State. It's that such a good what if um, is what if fucking Washington doesn't let Edwards magically find that, like, that I, you can't even call it a hole, that chasm after running into the line of scrimmage for like two seconds uh, in, the, in the first quarter or whatever. About the craziest thing ever, right? Like he yeah. literally runs in the, into his own offensive lineman and he crushed. I mean, I had like zero Edwards in fantasy, so I was pretty much toast from the first drive. <laughs> <clears throat> not that I would obviously, I would did not play so much that I couldn't, I wouldn't trade that for a championship, yeah. but. Yeah, that was a weird one. You know, people were commenting about like how big of a game he had against Washington. And it was like, he literally had a big game doing exactly what I made the tweet about. So what about the only, you know, receivers different in this regard? Cause like two receivers can be valuable. Like it's just a different position. But one guy I thought of that was interesting was Mario Williams at Tulane, you know, goes to the smaller school, do you think he is appropriately valued currently? He's like a mid to late teens. Do you think he's appropriately appropriately valued? And or do you think there's someone else instead that should be picked? I would love to I to read up on what's been happening at Tulane this spring. I haven't read anything. And like there's a lot of unknowns, I guess, about about that team, but it's it, there's it, I think it warrants um, research, warrants consideration because there's upside there um, as well, right? Like, so how smooth is transition going to be from uh, Fritz to Summerall, generally speaking, for the overall program? What's going to happen at QB between Kai Horton and Ty Thompson? Um, is Makai Hughes going to be a true uh, bell cow? I think that you can make a decent argument one way or the other. And then one, what's going to happen with the receiver room? Who are they? they took multiple transfers, right? Um, it's who, who else is there? They brought in a guy named Therese Trainer. I don't know where he's from. I thought there was someone else too. Right now, their receiver group is that trainer guy, Mario Williams, Yo Keith Brown. They return yeah. Alex Bowman, the tight end. And then they have a bunch of random guys, Bohannon, Fleming. Okay. Maybe I invented that. Um, outside of Hughes, I haven't taken anyone on that team yet, but yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't really know what to expect. Um, I, the way, I mean, the guys you just, amongst the guys you just listed in their receiver room, right? I think it's tough to make an argument for anyone other than, uh, than Mario. He was so bad. Yeah. It's it's like, what does that say when you're so bad as a part of a 
typical rotation at USC, you got snaps and you were just so bad with Caleb Williams. I don't know. I don't have any Mario. I don't know if it's really all that worth it. I mean, like the quarterback battles between Kai Horton and Ty Thompson. Horton, I kind of like he had that one cool game two years ago that I feel like I'm still holding on to is like the yeah. reason why I think he's decent. Ty Thompson, I guess, was battling injury, like a foot injury or something, like minor foot injury that was naggy at Oregon. And now he's kind of finally had surgery on it. So I think he was early. He was there this spring, but he didn't partake in a ton of drills. I don't know. And I kind of don't think Ty Thompson's any good, personally. Do you have a, a read on who wins that job? No. Do you have a read on who you want to win the job? Um, maybe Horton, just from perspective, like stability of uh, the offense. And well, I feel like he can scoot a bit, like the rushing volume, presumably. It just, if we're not going to play games with like two or three running back committee type deal, like you would think that uh, Horton is, would be really solid for, uh, for Makai Hughes. I love Makai Hughes. I'm like yeah. knee deep in Makai Hughes. There was some quote about the running back coach saying that they want to make him a superstar or something Not like really. that. Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, call me in. Um, I mean, he, he showed to be able to carry the load last year, 258 carries. So, yeah, he was great. Yeah. What's weird, though, is they only had like 14 rushing touchdowns, which feels odd considering Michael Pratt was there and like that was a decent offense. Maybe it was not as decent as I thought it would be, but any players you wanted to add or maybe any other random thoughts? Um, no, not really. Uh, we're kind of in a lull right now, right? Beginning of June. Yeah. Some would argue that we're uh, a month away from college football. <laughs> I was just going to say, I, I have heard we're a month away from college football. Yeah. Um, so you got, full you got we're already in june then you got the full month of july and then college football's in august so i I count that as one month i can i can be down with that one random thing here we're doing this supplemental draft this uh nate league 24 team or supplemental draft just started uh monday do you have a favorite pick so far besides you taking the quarterback four for texas tech uh I, so I, I, yeah, I have the quarterback court for Texas Tech, and then I broke the tie on what to do in the second round, taking the Stanford guy, Elijah Brown, even though, like, what, one of my, uh, what would you call it, my soapboxes to stand on is that uh, Troy, Troy Taylor is a grifter and doesn't deserve yes. to be a head coach. Still, cool freshman, four star quarterback um, with the same, uh, name is uh, first name is my son like easy easy to break the tie there on what to do so i like both my picks my quarterback room is so stacked uh for this year that i'm i'm drafting quarterbacks thinking like okay i want to keep the room stacked for years going forward so i'm totally cool with like not getting a ton out of these guys in 2024 um but favorite pick i mean i was really fucking upset when uh the Hawaii guy went. Um, I was planning on get, taking him in round two. Um, so when that happened, that was annoying. Micah Alejado. Yeah. Did you know he's a lefty? <laughs> I did not, but now I officially. He's do like a not five foot nine lefty. Um, so there, he's got that going for him. Uh, but everything else about him is uh, like obviously insane, uh, just from a statistic uh, perspective. Um, do you – so I took in this Dylan Rayola at 106 and Quentin Martin, the Penn State running back, at 204. Do you have thoughts on on how I've executed my draft? Have you watched Rayola? Yeah, not really. Dude, he's just like – he just is so polished and cocky on the field. Like, it's he's just going to step in. It's like – it feels Rosany. Um, Like, we're going to watch him take the field week one and the kid just like – oozes like he belongs as a true freshman leading a team uh, at the, in the in the power five at the SB, FBS level. Like it's going to be, to- I think it's going to be totally fine. Like obviously the, like you just, 
their schedules their schedule is extremely soft to start to like it's Everybody. like it is definitely one that you could kind of get away with starting a freshman I don't like him in typical supplementals because he doesn't run, but because right. this is essentially a start three quarterback league telling me I can get three years of starting quarterback one. That's probably going to transfer to something better here soon. Like the offense at Nebraska is not one that's going to be the uber productive for fantasy, but like three years of a starting quarterback. I don't know. It's hard to say no to that. Totally. Yeah. I, t- I totally agree. What? Um, I mean, oh, what were you going to say? No, I got nothing good. Um, I had a question for, oh, why is, uh, what's the recent news presumably that has like, so initially in drafts in this off season, Chris Hudson was going high, generally speaking as the slot receiver on Wazoo. Why is the Meredith guy like the preferred guy now? I don't know. Um, I it must honestly... be something. I, I don't know what it is either. I honestly was surprised that he was even, I didn't even know he was available. Like this is, I don't know how I missed him, but it does seem like uh, he is slotted in for one of the slot positions. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, for sure. I was, um, I was of course. So if I needed QB help for this year, I would have taken Sluka in round one, of course, my dog. Um, but I don't know. My QB room is it's good this year. Like uh, it would take some really ridiculous stuff to happen where I'm I'm foaming at the mouth for quarterback help in 2024 in this league. So I yeah, with what... you having Kadon Salter, you pretty much. I mean, that's such a stable, right? Like it just keeps things nice and simple and straightforward. You have Will Howard, Taylor Green, Hudson Card, Morton, Malachi Nelson, Chandler Morris, like. Smother the names are there, so yeah, I don't disagree with you for thinking if you're gonna go draft a quarterback, it shouldn't be for this year. Yeah. Um we talked about Ohio earlier. What did you think of Ricky Hunt going 14th overall? I'm I'm a huge uh hunt hunt fan. I've I take him in best balls. Um he, he's inching up. So uh, he's been going like a B round or a round or two before I'm like getting ready to pull the trigger. Um, so I've been getting him a little less frequently lately, but I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in like he it ties it. The justification ties in nicely to why we don't really feel uh, great about uh, things. Parker Navarro, like what are they going to do other than run the football? And also, like, I don't know if you've seen Anthony Tyus play. Like, that dude is his, he has cinder blocks for feet. Like, the dude is not do, doing anything um, from a, in, like, from a dyna- dynamic perspective at the running back position. So, um, they're going to, like, they're going to run the ball 40 plus times a game. And, we, like, we saw how incredible Hunt looked. It's, it, it's interesting, like, why did why did it take until the bowl game for him to get on the field? Um, like I, I assume it's like some deferment to your elders uh, type stuff. Like we need to give O'Shawn Hallison carries for whatever reason, uh, right? But um, they did it so they could make sure that both of them, Bigger and Allison, both stayed for next year. <laughs> look at look how that played out. Yeah, yeah. you know, Bigger is one thing, but like Allison was another. 3.3 3 yeah. yards per carry. Like eh. so, it does make you wonder. Like why did that happen? But sometimes that bull stuff will get you, you know, like I just don't know. This offense is going to be bad. So if they don't score a lot of touchdowns, at least he's getting the volume. I was considering him in the draft just because I have I need RB so bad. And uh, I look to see who drafts. I always like to see who's drafting the players I'm considering. And I saw you, like you literally have them in like five of six drafts. Like you are everywhere. So. All right, well, I think that's, unless you have anything else, Danger, I think that's it for this week. No, I, it's, I mean, we're we're two rounds into this Nate draft, right? Which is really like four rounds because it's like 24 teams um, versus 12. What? How late into the draft was it, were we when you first saw a name that you hadn't heard of? Um, I have heard all of these names except for like the random freshman. Like I don't, I'm not going to really 
say, oh, you know, oh yeah, I don't, I didn't know who uh, this Dicky guy at Texas Tech is. Like, I, I don't really blame myself for missing that one, but uh, I was surprised by your Brown pick. I hadn't even thought Grunkmeyer was a surprisingly weird, odd name. Maybe is the best way to say it. Uh, the most interesting pick, though, is probably this Tommy Ula, Ulatowski, who we probably could have considered talking about earlier in this show. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, I don't. That, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, I I have a subset of returning starting quarterbacks that I'm considering. Like he's in my queue, or he was in my queue, but. I don't know. I, I prioritize a lot of other quarterbacks over him. Um, oh, for me, the first guy I, I, I just had, I've never heard of this guy in any capacity. Um, the TCU quarterback. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. The only reason why I knew this was because I listened to one of the campus to Canton, like top 10 quarterbacks coming in and they yeah. talked about him. Although what threw me off was the spelling of his name. I'm not sure I could pronounce either his first or his last name. Correct. First thing, you have, you have to just go with Haas, right? Or House? House? Haas? House? I don't know. He's got to be he German. Plays, what is, he plays what is in that? Texas. He plays that, in Texas. We're not going to give him a German pronunci- pronunciation. We got to go with Haas. Haas, which also could be. What did the What did the I campus show um, say about him? Like, what's his deal? They liked him. I. He's a smaller guy that can run. He's like really fast. I think his speed score is like super fast on a. Um, on the canvas again tools, uh, super raw. I kind of said something in the slack and to Nate and some of the guys, like, isn't he kind of like a Damon Williams light, like kind of like a, like a dollar store version of that in a sense, but not more generic brand version, you know? Yeah. Like, so I think he's one of those super raw types that could be super awesome. Like Damon Williams, but undersized, more runner than thrower and uh he feels blocked to me like demond williams there's a way he could play this year yeah. i don't know besides injury i'm not sure i don't I'm not sure how he gets in the in in you know and what are the likelihoods that he's actually at uh tcu next year yeah so all righty well that is it for this week hope everybody has a a good one enjoy the show and we'll probably catch you next week see you later guys